Thank you very much for your uh, testimony and your service. Yesterday, as you know, Army Chief of Staff uh, General George Casey said that he had no reason to doubt Senator Obama's account by an Army captain of a rifle platoon in Afghanistan uh, that uh, his platoon was short on men, short on ammunition, and short on Humvees. Uh, that incident, though a while back in time in Afghanistan, is hardly isolated. Uh, only this Sunday, there was another report on the 173rd Airbo Airborne Combat Team in northeastern Afghanistan that noted, quote, the soldiers were on a 15-month tour of duty that included just 18 days off. Many of them were stop-lost, meaning their contracts were extended because the Army is stretched so thin. You're not allowed to refuse these extensions. And, quote, we don't get supplies, assets, we scrounge for everything, and live a lot more rugged. Admiral uh, Fallon, the head of U.S. Central Command, I think has been quite candid and frank in recent months in describing the Taliban as uh, having been more successful in regaining their strength because of the invasion of Iraq. In Afghanistan, there was, to use Admiral Fallon's words in January, quote, kind of a little bit of neglect. And in another interview, Admiral Fallon said our Afghan problems began occurring when, quote, the attention and the resources were focused in Iraq, not where Osama bin Laden is hiding and not where those who aided and abetted him were regaining their force. As you know, the bipartisan Afghan study group, co-chaired by retired Marine Corps General James Jones, for whom I know you and the Pentagon have a great deal of respect, has described the dire situation that this mismanagement has caused, concluding that Afghanistan risks sliding into a failed state and becoming a forgotten war. His report found that in Afghanistan there were, quote, too few military forces, insufficient economic aid, and no clear and consistent comprehensive strategy. The assessment uh, that he made uh, concluded and recommended that we stop tying together, as the administration has wrongly done, Afghanistan and Iraq, because this creates, in their words, the false impression that they consist of the same mission, something many of us in Congress have been saying since the outset. My questions to you, Secretary England, are, number one, isn't General Jones and his bipartisan group correct that our allies will be unwilling to provide the resources that we need to get the job done in Afghanistan as long as the administration continues to lump uh, Afghanistan and Iraq together in the mislabeled global war on terrorism? Second, while the cost of the war, which you're here to testify about today in Iraq, uh, is measured in blood, is measured in the $12 billion a month you've been spending there lately, isn't part of the cost also the job that was left undone in Afghanistan as these resources were diverted to Iraq? And third, uh, when we look at the, the claim that we were going to capture Osama bin Laden dead or alive and weaken the Taliban, <coughs> Aren't we farther from that objective today than when you testified before this committee last year? So a lot of questions, and I'll turn some of them over here to the vice, who's probably more capable than I am. I know General Jones well. He was in my office just the other day having lunch I with so. me. Um, uh, I haven't gotten that kind of report directly from General Jones, so well, I guess I'm, I'm a little surprised. I'm reading from the report that he chaired and signed, and I'm sure you have copies of that because the Pentagon made a, a fairly – uh, uh, short reaction to it, but I'm reading directly from the report. I'm sure you and your office have at least read the report, haven't you? Came I have, but 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 uh, but also haven't picked out just a few words out of the report. So I think well, you have I'm, to take the report in context. I don't want to debate the report. I mean, I'm not here to do that. Well, the my question the is report. the conclusion. Do you agree that, uh, as they concluded and recommended, that uh, we're not going to get the help we need until we decouple? Uh, the Afghan war and that effort from Iraq. So my understanding is the number of people supporting us in Iraq has actually grown so that the NATO has well, really, committed. Don't, as, we, don't we really have and, a phased redeployment already underway in Iraq as Poland leaves, as Australia leaves, as Canada leaves, 
and you supplement it by hiring the Georgians to come in? So there's discussions. Uh, the secretary was just in Europe, and so I don't want to preempt him, but the secretary was in Europe talking to our NATO allies. Our NATO allies understand the importance of Afghanistan. It is have a they separate. Sent, have they sent any new troops there? Uh, there they are. They haven't sent what, what uh, Secretary Gates asked for. Well, there are discussions with the NATO allies, and I'm not well, going to preempt those. Don't dis- help and I'm not going to preempt those discussions, sir. So, well, but the discussions have been going on for a long the, time, and the troops haven't come. Do, do you disagree with uh, the recommendation of the Afghan study group that Afghanistan and Iraq have to be decoupled before we get the help we need? If you do, I, I will respect your disagreement. Uh, sir, my view is we are funding the effort. I mean, this is the budget committee. We are funding the effort in Afghanistan. We are doing what we need to do. Unfortunately, I will tell you that in the budget itself, where we have requested funds today, we do not have the funds we need in Afghanistan because they're still waiting approval by the Congress. So well, I would I say that that's the dodge uh, that's that's been it is, standard to to avoid it dealing is with what, the inability of our allies to do their fair share. So it's not all American blood and not all American taxpayers and not somebody up in northeastern Afghanistan who has to scrounge for supplies. Well, and you have not gotten those resources, and this bipartisan committee. Uh, came out with a report in January that the Pentagon's been dodging that made a clear recommendation from the former head of the Marine Corps. And I'm just asking you for a straight answer. Do you agree that we've got to decouple to get somebody else to share a little of this burden? Or are we going to have to keep carrying it all by ourselves because of an ideological commitment to tie these two unrelated conflicts together? Mr. Doggett, we have a global war on terror, and we fight that on different fronts. And we fight that in Afghanistan, and we fight and we fight that in Iraq, and yes. we have troops deployed in other parts of the world. And so sure. this is a global war. And I understand that's the and party it, line, but it's the party line that General Jones' bipartisan commission <coughs> rejected. And I take I'll take your answer as uh, a a, a, dis, a respectful disagreement. Just could just get a response to my last question: Aren't we in worse position today? Uh, with reference to the Taliban, with reference to catching Osama bin Laden than we were when you were here last year? I'll let the, uh, I'll let the chairman answer, the vice chairman answer that. I would tell you this, we are against a determined foe. I do not think you can predict day to day and month to month the fight against the Taliban. You it's know, a long, pardon me, sir, it is a long fight country. against the Taliban. It is not something you're going to measure day to day or week to week. And so this is a determined foe, and it will ebb and flow. But we have forces in Afghanistan to deal with those issues along with our NATO allies. And so this is a combined coalition fight in Afghanistan. Secretary, I will accept your answer. But I found your answer earlier to Chairman Spratt and again now that the reason you can't budget is because we have an unpredictable foe to be frankly astounding. If in the history of the military history of this country we've ever had a predictable foe, I'd like to know when it was. And I agree, by the way, and that is the way we have funded in the past. We fund our war costs as we have war costs, and that's what we're asking this Congress to do again is to fund the war costs. And it is important that those costs be funded. Otherwise, we cannot prosecute the war. It does take funds to do that, and it has been very disruptive to have to go from hand to mouth when we do not have those funds appropriated. You've got the funds to carry this war on through July, don't you? That's the report from the Congressional Research Service trying to get an objective analysis. If we don't do if we if we folded our tents and went home, which we certainly don't plan to do, you've got the resources now. It's not because of any inaction here. You don't have the resources from our allies, of course, because you've we, been unable to get them because you won't accept the recommendations of people like General Jones. I yield back. Mr.